Time to catch up with another member of the House of Keys and we've got Speaker June Watson joining us. Uh, Mr Watson, um, let's talk about the steam packet maybe first and the inquiry that you're very keen on this, you're involved in it. Where's this going to go? Well, we, we don't know. The Public Accounts Committee is going to take an independent look at this. We know that the Council Ministers, the Chief Minister, has commissioned a review of this. Um, we know that the Steam Packet has done their own internal review, but we're really the only body that's going to be able to look at this and uh, perhaps ask some of the, the difficult questions. I mean, that's the advantage of uh, scrutiny committees of Tinwald, that we're able to take evidence, we can do that in public, and we can perhaps ask some of the difficult questions that officers can't ask. Can you give any solutions, though, or potential you know, recommendations, things that can be sorted out later? Or is it you just a, a talking shop, really, with a report at the end of it? Oh, no, the Public Accounts Committee has got a very strong record of delivering uh, recommendations for improvements. That's really what we're about, to make sure that if mistakes happen, that we close loops and uh, learning loops and make sure they don't happen again, um, that we make sure that there's good value for money. We make sure that uh, there's, there's a good insur assurance environment around that. So um, really, it is about looking forward and providing some uh, constructive input, not just sort of pointing fingers and, and knocking. But... At the end of the day, there's these other inquiry, Chief Minister, you just say, um, are you not thinking he will come up with the same answers as you? Well, I think what the public want is an independent inquiry, and that's what the Tinwald Public Accounts Committee can deliver that an officer of government can't. And someone gets a rap like that, or does it go further? Well, I think uh, traditionally we look at the evidence before deciding on things like that, Paul. But, OK, I'm trying to get to the point that <laughs> what could happen... Uh, Things could be changed, or, or, or you well, will just come up with a report. Parliamentary inquiries have had big consequences. I mean, if you look back at Michaela Morris and Malcolm Couch and, and how that one went about the uh, the delivery against what the health service should be doing, that had some pretty significant consequences. So the Public Accounts Committee does have teeth. It does have influence um, if that's needed. And <clears throat> I'm not going to prejudge this inquiry, but I think the important thing is to ask the questions in the first place. OK, moving on. Uh, genomics. Uh, you've got uh, Rachel Glover coming to talk to you or give you evidence, I understand. Yeah, this has been a live issue for quite some time. Um, the, the importance of genomics and how it works, what it delivers, why it delivers it. It's something that there seems to have been some friction around and we want to get to the bottom of that issue as well. So uh, the Public Accounts Committee again inviting uh, Dr Glover in uh, to give evidence at the end of April. So at the start of April. Now, she's not one to hold back. I've interviewed her myself. Uh, she, she will she'll give it to you with two barrels worth is that what you're expecting to find out completely her side of what's been going on because it's been interesting to, to watch the developments especially the press conferences every time her name gets mentioned well that, that's it and we want to sort of try and get to the bottom of this issue really um to hear both from uh, government and from dr glover and, and sort of try and put some of this to bed because there's an awful lot of um conjecture i think as much around uh, around this whole issue as there is around as science. But you get your briefings. Do you not have a chance to just mention that at those briefings, what's going on on these particular things? It, yeah, absolutely we do. We get an opportunity to uh, to ask questions. Um, like um, Tim Walden Key's questions time, um, quality of answers may vary. Were you surprised at the last press conference when it came out that you'd been giving out information to social media before <laughs> the uh, press government press officers had? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a sorry day when the media blames me for asking the questions that they wish they'd asked. Well, I, I don't, you, by the way, a few of us had raised eyebrows at that question being asked, to be honest, because it's almost like saying don't put it out. But, I mean, does that get you into trouble doing things like that? No. I mean, I, I've done nothing wrong. And I welcome the Chief Minister's comments that um, it's absolutely the role of members to put out the information that's available to them. Um, no personal information has been has been sent out. This is about answering questions that are raised by constituents in much the same way that you're trying to do. Um, that's that's exactly what I'm trying to do and other me members are doing as well. So I say I, I welcome the Chief Minister's support on that. I think you gave out a bit of information about one person maybe being, being sent mm. over to the UK. So that, for instance, didn't come out without you telling us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you got told that in the first place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, I, I, you know, not whether that's something that's in confidence. I, there's no names, there's no ages, there's no conditions, there's no. Uh, so really, um, you know, I, I don't think I've let anyone down by mentioning that. What's your views on the press conference? I mean, we've got uh, the chief minister who's believing a lot of information that's been given to him that everyone's watching his own TV shows and then no one's watching the rest of it. Uh, I mean, we, we all have our 
kind of ideas that that is not quite as it is. What do you think? Well, I think uh, different people look for their media in different ways. Um, certainly some people you know, have that thirst for, for, for knowledge and will want to watch the press conference and watch it unfold as it happens and get that live. Um, others, and I think perhaps the people who um, like to get their information from my Facebook site, um, just like the, the too long didn't read version and you know that quick snapshot which is what i deliver just that that single pager if you like so that people can get the essential fit, facts and figures there and then and then move on to other things so it, it's horses for courses not everyone wants to spend you know 30 minutes uh, watching the press conference somewhat that uh, news light finally before i let you go um you're a regular user of the buses you, the situation is quite clear that a lot of the bus employees have been hit with covid any anything that you pick up because you as I say you're, you're a bus user is, is there something more that could be done for them yeah, I mean I have to say obviously I'm not on all the buses all the time um, my I was a bit surprised to hear the the comments around joyriding and um, because I obviously only get two buses a day once into Douglas uh, on a sitting day and once back because that's the only time I need to be in Douglas so one day a week but I, I've not been on a bus with more than six people on it and they all seem like they're going to work but as I say, I'm not there in the middle of the day when, when some of this might be happening, but um, I'm just not getting the, the impression that a lot of people are travelling on the buses. I think if I, had a, if I had a concern at the moment that hasn't quite been put to bed, it would be around um, ventilation in buses. We all have to wear masks, as we as you know, on the buses. Um, but is it better? To, is the ventilation system better than having a window open? Because obviously, if, pe- if there was somebody on the bus who did have COVID, um, is it which is least likely to transmit that is it having the window open is it having the ventilation system on and that's something that i'm still looking forward to getting more answers on interesting because i mean is there some sort of mixed mix messaging going on because you have to wear them as you say on the buses but it's advisory almost to use them elsewhere yeah i mean the risks are lower out and out in the street and, and out in the general public uh, so you, that, that is just a lower risk but when you're traveling around for 45 minutes in a bus it is a closed environment so it's just trying to weigh up those and balance those risks Okay, finally, how are you getting on with the, the virtual sittings? It's not the best answer, I presume. It's a bit clunky in places, but uh, do you look forward to getting back in the, in the actual room altogether? Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to getting back in the chamber and eyeballing the members um, so that they can get some of the cues as to when their answers are too long, um, when their questions are too long, because that's really, really hard to do in uh, the virtual environment to, to sort of cut people off and to give that um, sort of visual feedback to, uh, to what's going on in the chamber. Um, I think we did. We hit a new low this week with only getting through four questions um, in, during question time. That really needs to improve. But that's very much in the hands of, of members because it's so hard in a virtual environment to be able to sort of cut people off or chip in or give them that, you know, wrap it up. Um, but that's that's something we're going to need to sort of uh, look at if if it's going to carry on like this. Okay, but I need to go on that just a bit more because I mean clearly it wasn't a long enough to get the questions answered. Uh, we've heard from Laurie Hooper already saying it's frustrating. Uh, uh, others have also said that. Uh, are you worried that you get the Komen block vote constantly on this? Uh, well, that's that's the rules as it stands at the moment. They're the rules that have agreed by members, but I, I'm aware that there is a motion coming forward at the back end of April that will reduce the threshold required for um, question time to be continued, to be lowered. And that's going to be a really interesting debate to follow uh, and uh, follow the ripples of that uh, at, the, at the end of April. And have you got a view on this yourself? Uh, I don't think question time is a perfect instrument. Um, it, it doesn't seem to naturally prioritise questions. It's something that we, we start with questions to the Chief Minister. We have three of those, then three to the Treasury Minister, and then there's a rota. That works a lot of the time, but sometimes it doesn't necessarily have all the questions to the Chief Minister or from, say, one member. That doesn't quite allow the diversity of of voices in the time that we have available and it is only one hour for questions so it is an awful lot to try and get in there even at the best of times but uh, can't stress enough how much um, short punchy questions and short punchy answers are the best way to get your message across